Hey guys, Mike here, the Detroit Borg, with a look at the ASUS PadPhone X for AT&T. This is available for $199 on contract, and is pretty much a value proposition. You get a high-end 5-inch Android smartphone plus a 9-inch tablet. But the thing is, the phone actually powers the tablet. So in order for the tablet to work, the phone actually has to be connected. This also means you only have one internet connection or one data connection to pay for. So you don't have to pay for a tethering connection or pay for a secondary internet connection on the tablet. So it's kind of a nice option to have. All right, so let's go ahead and flip this over. We're gonna peel this little plastic tab here. Flip it over again. Pop open the lid. So the first thing we see here is the tablet dock. So you can see on the back we have the dock for the phone. Let's go ahead and peel off this plastic here. Now we'll take a closer look at this once we get to the phone. Of course, it does not work until the phone is connected here. So under this tray, we'll find our paperwork, including a quick start guide for telling you how to use this phone, including the hardware features and the software features, which we'll explore in this video. Now we have our phone. This is that five inch ASUS phone that includes NFC and wireless charging built right in. Let's go ahead and peel this off. So again, this is a five inch display, full 1080p HD. So that's good for 441 pixels per inch. So we'll take a close look at that in just a minute. While we take a look at the accessories here, I'm just gonna remove this. Now they do include a pair of ASUS branded earphones, including this remote control, no volume control, it's just a click button and a microphone. You can see these are in your headphones and they do give us replacement ear tips. We also have an ASUS branded USB wall adapter for charging both the tablet and the phone. And then we have a micro USB 2.0 cable for charging and syncing your devices. And on the other side, we have our warranty information as well as important notices and regulatory information. All right, so let's take a close look at the pad phone. Again, a five inch display, super IPS, which has a pixel density of 441. Again, this is a full HD display. You can see that the bezels are fairly small, so it's fairly compact, feels perfect in my hand. I think it's the perfect size, beautiful, high resolution display. I think it looks pretty good. Up top, you'll find our earpiece right next to the two megapixel front facing camera. You also find all of your sensors here, your proximity sensor, your light sensor. You also find a really small and kind of dim notification LED light just in the upper right corner. Now toward the bottom, you can see we have on-screen Android controls, which saves some space along the bezel to keep it nice and compact. Now for the back, we have our 13 megapixel rear facing camera, which can record video at 4K resolution. We also have our loudspeaker and an LED flash. We have our AT&T branding. You can see we have this nice kind of textured material. It has this nice finish. It actually feels really nice in the hand. Now toward the bottom, we have a microphone along with a micro USB port, which is flanked by these two pinholes for connecting to the tablet dock. Now along the right hand side, you'll find your volume rocker and your sleep wake button. Along the top, you'll find the headphone jack and the noise cancellation microphone. Now the back panel of this phone is removable here. You basically use the USB port toward the bottom to pry off the back panel. Now you can see the back panel integrates both both NFC and wireless charging, so you can see all the electrical connections right here, which interfaces with the phone right there. Again, the battery is sealed in here, 2300 milliamp hours, so a fairly average sized battery. Now, removing the back panel gives us access to the micro SIM tray along with the micro SD card slot. This does support 64 gig cards, and the pad phone comes standard with 16 gigs internally. All right, so the next thing to take a look at is the tablet dock, which is basically just a battery, a display, and a dock for the phone. The phone does all the work. Of course, we do have a few buttons here. We have a volume rocker along the side for adjusting the volume for the internal speakers on the tablet, as well as the uh, sleep wake button for uh, putting the tablet to sleep. We also have our micro USB charging port. So there is an internal battery in here for powering the display. Uh, again, this is 4,990 milliamp hours, almost 5,000. Uh, so this does supply its own power. It's not powered entirely by the phone. And then if you look at the dock itself, you can see that we have this sort of a plastic metal trim piece. It kind of looks like metal, but it picks up on the design elements of the phone itself along the edge. Along the inside, you can see there's quite a bit going on here. You have these friction fittings along the side. And then if you look down here, if you look at the ports, you'll see that we have a micro USB charging port or, and the data port for connecting to the phone. And then we have those uh, pins on either side of the dock. Now on the front, we have a nine inch display with a resolution of 1920 by 1200. So it's a bit better than a 1080p display. And we also have these front facing stereo speakers, which are quite nice. Again, those are controlled by the volume control on the tablet itself. We also have a one megapixel front facing camera, which is unfortunately a lesser camera than the one that's included with the phone. Uh, so this can't do 1080p like the two megapixel camera can on the phone. We also have an ambient light sensor and an LED notification light. Now until the phone is connected, this tablet doesn't work. You can hit that power button, nothing happens. So let's go ahead and connect the phone here. So we're just gonna slide it in 
You can get a little vibration, a little tone that's connected, and the display wakes up immediately. So basically, it's transferred the display of the phone to the tablet. So you can unlock the phone and move around. It's basically a scaled up version of the OS that comes on the phone. Very little is different here, but we're going to explore that. So as you can see here, we have a fairly ample bezel that goes around this display. And I think part of the reason is the fact that uh, this does have a keyboard accessory, which I don't have here, uh, but you can get a keyboard accessory that allows you to turn this basically into a laptop. And of course, you do need some width for a full-size keyboard, so it looks like they just added the width for that keyboard dock. Now, of course, it does give you plenty of room to hold on to the tablet without actually touching the screen. Now, if you look in the status bar up top, you'll find that we have two battery values to look at, both the tablet's battery and the phone's battery. Now, you can charge these simultaneously, but what happens is, is that the phone charges first and then the tablet begins charging. Now, once you remove the phone from the dock, you can see, turns off the display on the tablet, goes right to the phone itself, and again, reconnect it to the dock, wakes it up right away, and you're good to go. Now let's say you're looking at an app on your pad phone and you want to take it to your tablet. All you have to do is dock the phone. And as you can see, it's loaded the app and picked up where you last left off. So for example, let's go ahead and open up one of these articles. Okay, so now we're on this article and let's go back to our phone. Let's just remove our phone here. And there we go, it's picked up where we last left off on the tablet. Now when your phone is docked, you can receive phone calls and answer them directly on your tablet. And notice the SMS app also carries over to the tablet experience as well. All right, so let's take a basic look at the user interface starting with the lock screen. So you can see on the lock screen, we can swipe to unlock if we like it. Again, you can see we do have these shortcuts here for launching key apps and you can adjust this under settings. So for example, if you wanna launch the browser, just swipe and it launches the WebKit browser that comes with the Asus phone. And you can also swipe up to launch Google Now. It takes you right to Google now and you can say okay Google launch YouTube Opening up. now from the home screen you can swipe up to get to Google now as well you can swipe down to get to the notification shade as you can see here the quick setting toggles are not present until you press up here so you get to all your quick setting toggles including your brightness now you can also use a two-finger gesture to get to all of them so we have cast screen which allows us to wirelessly broadcast our display to a mirror cast compatible device like a Samsung smart TV as I have in my case you also tap and hold on any one of these icons to get right to the settings panel now we have something called reading mode which only works with certain book reading apps like playbooks this will dim the display make it a warmer color to make reading a more pleasant experience now we also have something called smart Smart saving, which is a battery saving feature. You can tap and hold on this to get to the control panel so you can see your battery history as well. So you have ultra, save, ultra saving mode, which you enable, maximizes the battery life and disconnects the network connections when the device is suspended. Optimized mode extends the battery life and always keeps the network connection. This is on by default. And you have customized mode, which allows you to change the behavior for specific actions when in power saving mode. Now on home screen, you can tap and hold anywhere on the home screens to get to your apps, your widgets, your wallpapers, or edit the pages. If you go to edit the pages, there you can add additional pages or or trash pages so for example you can add a page or we can take it up to remove and you can select which one you want to be the home screen by doing that as well so again you can also pinch in and out to do the same thing you can also tap and hold to get to our apps so this is our app drawer you can also get to the app drawer right here so you can see you can slide through them now you can see it's organized by frequently opened apps our downloaded apps as well as all of our apps you can see that we do have some uh, AT&T apps we have a lot of Google apps and some Asus apps now in terms of wallpaper, there's an interesting one here. So let's go to home and lock screen. You can see if we scroll over here, we have my water. So this is a uh, wallpaper that basically reacts to the accelerometer in the phone and indicates the power level of your phone. So you can see we're at 84%. So you can see the uh, water comes up to about 84% on the screen. We're gonna set both here. Now under the settings panel, there's not a whole lot here. This is fairly close to stock. So for example, we do have power management. This allows us to uh, set our power management mode, which I showed you using the quick settings toggles. We also have our power consumption table to show us exactly what's using all of our power. Now, another thing I wanna take a look at is dynamic display list. Now, these are all the apps that will automatically scale up to the size of the tablet. So for example, if you're looking at one of these apps on the phone and you transfer it to the tablet, it'll scale up automatically, but not all apps are included here. So you have to go to edit, and then you can see all the apps that have been selected for this mode. That includes most of the first party apps and the apps that AT&T have added, but a lot of the apps that you've downloaded are not included here. That includes Chrome. Uh, so Chrome and a lot of the other Google apps are not enabled for this feature. So that's where you go to enable it. 
So for example, we have Google Play Movies and TV and that is not enabled for dynamic display. So let me show you what happens if you go and connect an app that doesn't have this feature enabled yet. So we're playing the movie. Let's go ahead and dock our phone into the tablet. So now you get this dynamic display pop-up and you can select the action you prefer. So I'm gonna go ahead and add it to my dynamic display list. So it takes you to the control panel on the tablet. I'm gonna go ahead and select it. So now if I dock my phone while the movie is playing, you can see it launches the movie right where I last left off. Now this also gives me a chance to show off the front-facing stereo speakers, which sound really good. We also have the pad phone charging policy settings. This basically allows you to customize how the tablet charges the phone. So we have intelligent mode and basically the phone has to be pretty depleted before the tablet starts charging your phone. We also have phone preferred mode, basically that if you enable this, it will constantly charge the phone when it's connected to the tablet. We also have power pack mode. And basically this will turn off the tablet and use it as a charging station as opposed to a tablet. Now we can also enable screenshot mode, which basically allows us to use the recent apps key to take a screenshot like so. Now normally the Android keys are pretty basic here. So we have swipe up to launch Google now. We have the home button, we have the back button, and then we have recent apps. And there really is no duplicated functions on those keys. Now let me just quickly show you the camera app, which does have tap to focus. You can also tap and hold to lock focus and exposure, as well as white balance. You can take your photograph. You can record video. You can switch between the front facing and rear facing camera like so. We also have our filters, that sort of thing that's available. We have our settings panel, which is kind of nice. The settings panel uh, has a lot of features here. And basically, if you just scroll through, it actually takes you through all your available settings. So you don't have to click between the camera mode and the video mode. You can customize your white balance, your ISO settings here, like so. Uh, your exposure values, optimization, so you can use auto on or off, camera resolution, shooting mode, that sort of thing. So lots of options right there. And then we can zoom in and out by using this little slider here, but you can also pinch in and out as well. You can also tap and hold on the camera key to take a bunch of photos all at once. And then you can select which one you want to be your favorite. Now, as you can see here under camera resolution, you have up to 13 megapixels. If you go to our video resolution down here, you can see we have up to 4K. Now, unfortunately, 4K is a, a low frame rate 4K. It's like 18 frames per second or something like that. I'm not sure what it is, but it's less than 30, less than 24. So I'll, I'll throw up some samples just to show you at the end the frame rate of the 4K video. Full HD is also 24 frames per second instead of 30 frames per second. So it's kind of a strange frame rate for these uh, settings. Now, when you activate the camera app, it's actually activating the camera on the phone. So you have a live interface with the camera on the phone. Now, the interesting thing here is that on Unfortunately, it dials back the performance of the camera when it's attached to the tablet. So for example, the resolution of the still camera is limited to 5.5 at most instead of 13. Same with video, unfortunately. That means you cannot use 4K video here. So at best, you have HD video recording here, 720, not 1080. Now, I'm not sure why that is. This is a pre-production unit, so things may change before it's finally released. Now, the tablet basically has the same interface as the phone, the same drop-down menu, the same settings panel, all the same settings, the same apps that are installed. You can swipe on the right to get to your quick settings toggles. You can swipe on the left to get to your notifications. Uh, you can swipe between your home pages, pinch in and out to edit them. You can tap and hold on one of the home screens as well to bring up your editor. Pretty much the same experience as well, but the tablet experience is customized. You can change your wallpaper, you can change the arrangement of the apps or the apps that appear on the uh, screen. But if you make any changes to the app content, so for example, if you remove an app, you're removing it from the phone because again, you're actually interacting with a phone and this is just a scaled up version of the display on your phone. Now the keyboard is also adapted for tablet mode. So for example, you can split it apart, you can move it around, or you can rejoin it. Now in terms of internal specs, we have a Snapdragon 800 processor clocked at 2.3 gigahertz with two gigs of RAM. The scores from Geekbench 3 are actually right in line with other high-end phones right now. You can see the single core score on the LG G3 is the same as the pad phone. Actually, the multi-core score bests the score on the LG G3. Now this may not be an accurate representation of performance because this is running a newer processor than the Snapdragon 800 in here, but you can see this is right up there with the best smartphones right now. Now, I think ultimately when it comes down to purchasing the phone, it's based largely on the phone itself, which I think is pretty decent. It doesn't look 
terribly interesting. It's not made out of premium materials, uh, but it's nice and lightweight. It's a very lightweight phone, fairly large screen, five inches, which is very close to the Galaxy S5 and certainly much bigger than the iPhone. It has a really high resolution 1080p display that's right up there with the best of them out there right now. So definitely impressed with the phone unit overall. It has a pretty decent speaker. Sound quality is pretty good. Call quality is pretty good. And uh, the feature set is pretty minimal. It's not a heavily skinned version of Android, so it's actually a pretty smooth running phone. Now the tablet is a little less impressive than the phone. It's bulky and thick and heavy. It's 1.7 pounds versus one pound or less on most large tablets today like the iPad Air. So it's kind of a bulky tablet. It seems to be best suited for a laptop type of setup. So if you get a keyboard and need a laptop that has cellular connectivity and don't want to pay for an extra data plan, this is kind of an interesting option. And again, you can place phone calls, receive text messages, all on your tablet while your phone is docked. It's also a charging station for your phone, so it's kind of like a battery backup for your phone, which is kind of nice to have. So at no extra cost, you get a high resolution tablet with LTE and 3G capabilities with stereo front facing speakers, a 13 megapixel camera with an LED flash and impressive internal specs with additional battery power. So definitely an impressive solution overall. All right guys, so that's gonna do for me in this video. Hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you again in the next one.